Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Dr. Zina speaking. Today we will speak about what is the difference between hypersomatosis and condensing osteitis or how to differentiate between them. But before we continue, make sure to hit the subscribe button down below for more videos. Number one, condensing osteitis. It is associated with a necrotic tooth. As you can see in the picture, the caries are deep enough that they are reaching the pulp and when we did the cold test, it revealed no response, which means that the pulp is dead, so it is associated with a necrotic tooth, or in other words, you can say a caries tooth, not a sound tooth. That's number one. Number two is that the root morphology is normal. As you can see, there is radio opacity that is surrounding the roots of the tooth, but the root morphology is normal. It is not big. The roots are not big. They are normal. They are the average length and height, etc. Now, condensing osteitis, as the name suggests, is a reaction in the bone surrounding the tooth and is not directly attached to the root because osti means bone and itis means inflammation. So it is an inflammation that is involved in the bone surrounding the root, not within the tooth itself. So the bone that is surrounding the root, there is an infection there which led to end up having the condensing osteitis. Another name can be sclerosing osteomyelitis as well. So what is the cause behind condensing osteitis? It is a variant of chronic apical periodontitis, which is equal to palpable inflammation, caries left in the tooth, neglected, led to a deeper, deeper inflammation, which the patient end up having condensing osteitis at the end. What about hypersementosis, also known as cemental hyperplasia? It is associated with a sound tooth, so it is not carious. Sound tooth, as you can see in the x-ray, the periapical x-ray, the tooth is sound, there's no caries associated with it, so we can see Number two is bulbous roots. As you can see, the roots, there is a radio opacity surrounding the roots. But not only that, you can see the roots are large. They are big due to the heavy deposition of the cementum. What is the function of the cementum? Cementum acts as a cement, attaches the tooth to the alveolar bone. So in, 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 in relation to that, the tooth is strongly attached to the alveolar bone which means that when we are planning to do an extraction for the tooth it's difficult to extract the tooth as one unit because it is heavily attached to the alveolar bone so it is problematic for any dentist to extract a tooth who's having hypersemitosis you can never extract the tooth with hypersemitosis within 30 minutes maximum minimum one hour minimum one hour you need in order to extract the tooth now what is the cause behind hypersementosis it is seen in patients with supra erupted teeth what do i mean by supra erupted as you can see in the picture that the upper six and seven or in other words the upper first molar and second molar are supra erupted they are going forward or they are going more up or they are going more down why is that the taking the place of the opposing due to missing opposing that's what i mean by the supra erupted teeth so whenever you have supra erupted teeth you might see in a patient that he will have hypersementosis and you can take an x-ray periapical x-ray in order to confirm your diagnosis now, someone might ask me, what is the similarity between hypersemitosis and condensing osteitis? Both, you can see there is a radio opacity surrounding the roots of the tooth. That is the similarity. Radio opacity surrounding the roots of the tooth. That is the only similarity that they combine together. 
Lastly, in conclusion, hypersemitosis is associated with a sound tooth, whereas condensing osteitis is associated with a necrotic tooth. Remember, I want to give you advice, everybody. If you have any caries in your mouth, whether you are feeling pain or not feeling pain, you need to get it checked by your dentist. Why is that? So that you won't end up having a variant of chronic apical periodontitis, that is condensing osteitis, that is pulpal inflammation, that is necrotic pulp, pulp is dead, which means that with time, if you get it ignored, the caries will start eating the tooth and then you will lose your precious tooth over just ignoring these simple signs. That's it, I am done. Thank you all for watching my video. If you have any questions, don't forget to write it down in the comment section below. Goodbye now.